Welcome back to season two of Loose Change. On this episode, I'm delighted to be joined by my friends Randeep and Chetna, founders of Artful Blend. I describe you as purveyors of artisan coffee and food in their very own coffee shop, which turns one years old this month. How exciting. Along the theme of the great resignation, they both hung up their hats in the city and quit the rat race to take the plunge and launch their own business. One year into that project, we're delighted to have them join us and talk us through the journey so far. Welcome, welcome to Loose Change. How are you both? Thank you for having us. Yeah, not bad, thank, thank you. you. Good. Um, really good to see you again, long time no see. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> we now have a coffee machine and a counter between us. Yeah, <laughs> this is a different, different setting. setting. Um, I'm really excited to hear a bit more about your story in a different, very different setting. I know I speak to you guys pretty much every morning as part of my daily routine. And afternoons. Exactly, and afternoons. <laughs> but I think it's important to just hear a bit more about you guys. I know you're always listening to hundreds of people's conversations about their days and themselves. I bet you don't get a forum to just talk about your own journeys. Mm-hmm. But what actually like inspired you to start up for Blend? Would you say? You want to go? You go. You go. Um, I think coffee within itself like was something that Chetna was into uh, a lot more and a lot earlier than I was. Um, I've only really got into coffee properly I would say in the last six seven years maybe. You a lot before that Mm -hmm. Um, and I I think ultimately it was uh, lockdown as those couple of years which really slowed life down for us um, after marriage, like I was introduced to this Sage Barista machine that Chetna had from a few years earlier. And we then ended up kind of just going around exploring various coffee shops, uh, buying retail bags of coffee, trying out different beans, and just learning the craft of how to make a good cup of coffee. Yeah. Um, and that kind of was the starting point, I think, to where we got with our blend. We actually picked our honeymoon resort based on the fact that they roast their own coffee beans. <laughs> That's so no, funny. Actually. That is so, so funny. Yeah, we became really passionate about it. And then I think the opportunity presented itself and we thought, what, what, what's better than a coffee shop I that's, think that's, that's, suited us, that's yeah. a real commitment to the cause like your honeymoon destination around coffee as well honestly <laughs> actually it's really funny when we look back to some of the footage from then yeah what we cute. thought we were doing like as latte art and it was just completely different and the guy was really like yeah you're doing it was like a spider web with chocolate wasn't <laughs> yeah, it? Was it? Like yeah, it yeah yeah you just look back and think whoa yeah. we've come such a long way mm. yeah. but you're probably living like every millennial dream of just like, I love coffee, I drink so much coffee, I'm gonna set up my own coffee shop and I'm gonna quit, quit. But that whole dream and fairy tale comes with so many more challenges than people could anticipate, which is probably why most people never dive in or take the opportunity to go ahead and do it themselves. Mm. But I'm quite interested in actually your personal journeys, because I think for most people, when they think of like coffee shops running their own businesses, it's like, oh, they've been in this world forever. Mm. But you guys had like quite interesting personal journeys and careers before diving in um, and starting your own coffee shop. What, how, how would you describe those journeys? I think mine was a bit more smooth and made a bit more sense in that my family, like my parents, have always been in business. So I think for me, I grew up around that. Fair enough, it wasn't in this industry, but I kind of, you know, I, I was used to like my parents being self-employed, mm. working 24-7 around the clock. And I also worked with my parents for their businesses for a few years after I graduated in law. Um, so I didn't really know what else I wanted to do. I knew the private sector law firm life wasn't for me. So yeah, I tested sort of, I helped them out with their businesses, which was nice because I didn't own the businesses. I didn't have that responsibility, mm. but I still got good experience with it then joined government and then I think when the opportunity presented itself to open the coffee shop even though I love my government job so so much um I think I was like if I don't do this now and give it a try I'm never going to yeah um and then yeah you had a I think more interesting journey yeah I think for me um I'm very much a comfort person so when I get into a certain flow I'm happy to stick with it and really nurture it and grow with it and go with time so abrupt change for me is like no go yeah but um yeah so my sort of journey is i've always been a creative i've always been a creative and 
professionally that led me into uh, architecture as a career path so you know studying and becoming an architect is is a long sort of Mass journey in itself yeah. seven Mass years yeah it, and then working in practice for another six six and a half years um so it was a long haul for me from the beginning um but whilst i was studying architecture at uni and also within practice i think i've always felt this like uh that i was limited to be able to express myself yeah um, you had an itch that creative out there and it was kind of more straight and narrow and that creative inside me always wanted to kind of get outside of the boundaries mm. um so yeah along the years i began this uh, art page called artful sketcher um kind of just just there with no intention just simply as a, as a as a portal to like upload my work share it with the world and you know this is way before instagram and yeah. things were even apps um and then yeah like however many years later it it grew into something quite organically that allowed me to connect with various people around the world have you know a crazy sort of clientele base do really cool projects and i think that sort of creativity is what fed into us calling our coffee shop art for yeah. blend um and kind of bringing some of those creative juices into what we do today in, in the coffee shop itself Yeah that's amazing. I think you're both like knowing you both you you're setting yourself short because you had an amazing career as an architect and then obviously you're a commissioned artist as well. Um you worked in government you were 007 I still think. <laughs> um, so I You'll like, never know. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the first time we spoke about that I went and said to my brother I was like she's a spy. <laughs> <laughs> But you both had like amazing careers before and I think like that's something that should be celebrated and then to take the risk and the plunge to then dive in and do something for yourself isn't a small feat and anyone that does it people always hear the champagne side of the story oh look they they were bosses they work for themselves they don't see everything else that goes into it and it's so funny because i saw you both this morning before work <laughs> and then we finished a full working day and now at the end of a working day we're here in the studio recording it's very much trading a 9 to 5 for a 24/7 which mm. people don't appreciate mm. is that something that took a while for you to adjust to or i think yeah i think you're right i think a lot of people have this romanticized idea of owning a coffee shop it sounds so cool yeah. and i can't count how many times people have walked in the shop and like i'm so jealous like i want one, one day like it's it's my idea and which is all great but i think they see that side to it and now living and breathing the other side to it there's so many more mechanics that go on behind the scenes so i think that adjustment from 9 to 5 from a 9 to 5 to 24/7 happens quite quickly and you know you find yourself as you dive into the deep end you have two options do you sink or do you swim yeah and and i i'll never forget literally a year ago where we were there kind of setting up we had the mayor come down to the ribbon cut and it was all like great and then there was a queue forming outside and all of a sudden it was like okay we're open like this is real what happens yeah, now like what it, it's just action and there you go and here we are you know, a year like, honestly it's just gone within a flash of an eye it's mad yeah absolutely i think obviously it's a, it's a huge huge commitment i think you kind of have to be available 24/7 like mm. you're no one at you are the only person responsible for it so it's almost yeah. like like i mean we don't know what it's like but they say it's like having a child because yeah. literally nothing will happen unless you do something and yeah. that's our baby and it's 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 hard work it's life changing for good and like for the more challenging yeah like, mm. times as well but Yeah, it's been it's been a journey so far. It's it's so funny because when you were saying earlier this morning actually that you woke up and you're like thinking already buzzing about like oh I need to put this out and I'm mm. thinking about product lines mm-hmm. and everything. Mm-hmm. So you never fully switch off. I sometimes dream about things that I just next day I'll I'll talk to myself before I go see okay this is what you're going to plan in your dream. Yeah. So by the time you wake up you can realize that dream. Yeah. yeah. Um and these dreams can be micro level. They don't have to be these massive dreams but it could be just like a small thing that you need to achieve that's been in the back of your head yeah. for several weeks but you just can't come around to doing it so you have to bring that into your own reality yeah um, but yeah like picking up on what you said like you always have to keep your eye on the ball like you can't switch off and even where we've had the odd time off here or there over the last year we're still working while we're away yeah, yeah. you know whether it's placing orders or like yeah. keeping up to date with the rota what's happening and i think uh yeah the coffee shop model 
demands that. Yeah. Um, I mean, last week, right? Like we were out for my birthday. Rindeep had planned so much and we had to come back because there was a leak. Like the dish, you know, there's just, there's always just something. always something. And I think you just have to be prepared for times yeah. like that. Obviously there are good times as well where maybe the shop's a bit quiet and we can get away, but then we get away and we're doing admin for the shop. So, yeah. you know, yeah, it's, it, it is, it is a whole different things. way of living to consider. Mm. And what you were saying earlier about like never quite switching off. I, I call that like the delusions of a creative. Cause I, I have that as well in, in, in different guises. And sometimes I'll like wake up with an idea and I'm like, oh my God, I need to send this to someone. I'll send it to like Shaq, my, my business partner and co-founder. And I know he must be thinking, what the hell is this guy messaging me <laughs> at 2, 3 a.m. for? But otherwise you feel like you lose it. And you, you need to just quickly get it out. And you're always thinking. Yeah. About I can this. totally relate to that as a creative, like the most random idea come, will come to you and like mid conversation, you'll just stop the convo and be like, yeah. hold on, what about if we do this like this? And yeah, yeah. Like I'm always tinkering with ideas. What can we do? And whether it's menu based, like aesthetically the space, like yeah. we put a lot of effort into creating a space that I think we wanted like ourselves to enjoy, yeah. uh, but also people that walk into it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like a lot of thought goes into every small detail, which yeah. sometimes maybe doesn't get appreciated, but yeah, uh, it, defi- it definitely, it definitely, yeah, it definitely does. I think when you, when you can definitely tell when someone's put a lot more thought and love into something than something which is just like being put out transactionally because then people come in and behave transactionally which you, you always get anyway but i think yeah. you're slowly building a kind of like community around the coffee shop as well i think is... we were very conscious of like there's a thing now like any food place restaurant whatever like it's got to be instagrammable type yeah, place yeah. And look we look the part mm. and i think a lot of the times you go to places and it will look the part but then that's where it stops yeah there's no and substance so yeah we were very alive to that not just create space that looks and feels good but then the service the quality yeah. of the produce uh, you know the menu the offering behind the substance behind all of that matches that yeah because otherwise what you find is people will come to an instagram or place the once get the instagram picture yeah and then not come back again yeah uh, but i think we were really conscious in building a community within yeah art for blend like that we keep seeing them again. That's and again. It, yeah. And I actually feel like you can, if you make a coffee with like love and passion, I genuinely think it makes a difference with the taste. It's like, you know, you, you know, it's just something that comes across in our food. I think our coffees. hundred percent, hundred percent, especially like someone like myself and I've gone on camera, like admitting to this, like almost seeking therapy to my audience being like, yo, I just love coffee so much. <laughs> and when you, when you do like, and it's like, it becomes an integral part of like your day, your routine, yeah. like, like you, you guys must get sick of me, but you see me like every morning and it's, it becomes like a composite part of your routine. And it's, yeah, certainly for me, it like sets me up for my day. So there is like so much more importance to that regime um, and ritual, ritual is the word. It's like it's like part of people's rituals for the day. Oh, I don't talk until I've had. My, you saw me yeah. this morning. I yeah. was like silent until I had a sip, and then I was like, I can talk now. I've yeah, it's, it's so funny, and so many people can relate to that. Yeah. It's a habitual thing, right? So yeah. it's routine, and sometimes even if you don't fancy the coffee, it's just part of yeah. the order of the day, and like you just grab one to go or come in for one, whatever it is, and yeah. I do, I do blame you guys partly. This this started before. Um, artful blending so but it definitely got um exaggerated in me afterwards is that I've, i'm full-on coffee snob like yeah. but i start like even at my I remember when i started my new job and i was talking to them and i was like um should we go for a coffee and i was walking around like like it's turning my nose up about <laughs> some of like the the chains and being like no i don't want no, that right. bean juice there's always yeah. waste of caffeine in the taste. but I'm quite bad that, I? she's really bad That's like you know a slightly uh, espresso coffee that is just slightly off slightly like, no. bitter slightly sour I'd be like no, no. yeah because it's <laughs> so important <laughs> it is important but taking you guys back slightly mm. um what were your expectations before starting your own business so when you went into it like you must look back now and be uh, if you can remind yourself because obviously now you're so in the depths of being into everything a year in what do you think your expectations were and you were like right we're doing this I think again, I think we both bring two different skill sets, like core skill sets to, you know, art for blend and me being that creative person. Um, I think my mindset's always on like visuals, aesthetics, and how can we make something look good and th- these kind of things. So for me, it was kind of like, 
oh, it'd be so cool just making coffee. Like, that looks really cool. And, yeah. Yeah. and then, you know, it's only when you start, you know, operating as a business and, you know, you realize there's so many more cogs that make up the mechanics of this machine that you're running. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, like, until you get that machine well oiled and constantly churning out the right sort of energy mm. is only then that you can make good looking latte art. Yeah. Like a good looking latte art without all of that in the background. Yeah. It's not going to have the same yeah. taste, the same feel, impact. The same impact. And so, yeah, I think that expectation really smacks you in the face. Like, okay, well, you really need to be on it. Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, I didn't expect the industry to be as friendly and open and as supportive as they mm. are so I run another business a beauty salon as well so for that it's a very different industry and I think while I kind of knew what to expect with running a business obviously this is a completely different scene mm. um, but yeah like with the coffee festivals and with you know the roasters that we use etc everyone has been so supportive it's literally like a tight-knit family isn't it and you can go to other coffee shops in east london anywhere and just spark a conversation and everyone's just so friendly so i think i didn't expect that sort of community um, community feel yeah yeah yeah. it's it's been incredible i've actually heard that quite a bit in like the startup space in general like there's this and obviously you can relate to coffee and people are like wanting to help newbie like business founders out and they want to help each other quite a lot um and i speak to loads of like startup founders and they're always saying like they've got mentors who would otherwise in any other industry would be perceived to be competition. But they're like, no, no, I want to help this person out. There's a lot more of like, let's all help each other out, community yeah. type feel, which is amazing to hear. Yeah. Um, the other thing, like being an architect, because I've definitely seen this, like the design element in your shop, like how have you tried to like impose your artistic background, architect and commissioned artist, let's not sell you short. <laughs> um, like how have you imposed that into Artful Blend? I think from the space itself to begin with, um, (laughs) how it looked before was completely different. And when you start kind of poking holes at what exists already, you start unearthing the kind of raw natural beauty that lies beneath. And we weren't afraid to kind of celebrate that and use what was already existing in there. So for example, there's a big fat column bang in the middle of the shop. And I think, Typically, if you walk into an empty shop and you see that it's kind of like an eyesore and you think, should we get rid of it? And then that that has so many knock-on sort of things that you have to do to kind of support that and strengthen that. Um, And we were just like, no, let's use that. Let's celebrate. So we kind of picked away at all of this, um, you know, the layers that were on the wallpaper and the plywood and all the other rest of it. Um, And I think this is really beautiful raw brick. And what we just did be you know, cleaned it up, buffed it up and kind of sealed it. And now we've got, I think, three exposed brick columns that really characterize the space. And then that was the starting of this running theme of raw industrial look and feel. Mm. So then we have exposed services running in, like along the ceiling uh, that allowed this natural height to the space. And I think uh, subliminally, when we enter spaces, we enjoy it for various reasons and sometimes we don't always know why and i think height is always one of those things especially for a typical high street type shop Um, and then we went on with that theme and it kind of led us to having this palette color palette where we had literally black gray and white and then just one sort of expression of color yeah um, that then fed into the logo so there was this whole running theme and funny enough it all began with this Pattern, yeah, pill, yeah. Which otherwise might have been seen as an ISO. It's crazy though, like when you explain that and like almost the origin story of like how everything looks, no one, like, well, not many people can appreciate like, how much thought and the story behind building this space um, and what actually goes into it. Um, was it a long time that you were actually renovating everything before yeah. you? Yeah, I it think was it was a about pretty long time six, because, eight months. yeah, like when Deep said, it was, a, it was a hairdresser, like it was just completely different and that had been there for like, I don't know, 40, 50 years for ages. Yeah. Mm. So it was a massive job. Um, and, you know, we started off with like, you know, the whole typical rustic coffee shop vibe. Yeah. And I think there's a certain charm with that, but I think we wanted to bring something different yeah. to the area, to Redbridge. And I think, yeah, we wanted to change it up a little bit. 
I get the parade looking a bit, yeah. you know, having getting a bit of an electric vibe going. Mm. So mm. Yeah. it was quite bold, and I think that has fed into the branding for yeah. us as a coffee shop, and it's almost marrying two sorts of worlds together in a way, and yeah. bringing this really edgy, funky, uh, creative yeah. uh, element mm. uh, that not only exists in the space. Uh, but also then in our drinks and food offerings. Yeah. Um, mm. And then bringing that specialty coffee to uh, an area which it's... it's yeah, yeah, exactly. You, yeah, it's yeah. amazing. I, it's yeah, a whole you, new concept. You cut short my morning walk. I used to walk, I'd have like a sunrise walk into Wanstead every morning. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. then I, I remember when you guys opened up, I was like, oh, there goes my walk. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, there's still a blank white wall, isn't there, as you walk in where he's yet to do a mural, but... Yeah, sure. funny enough, I've done quite a few murals like over the years in restaurants, outdoor spaces, etc. Yeah. And then we designated this one blank wall for me to do something. But, you know, as with every creative, when it comes to working for yourself, you get this block and you're just like, yeah. what should I do? And that the ideas just change constantly. So yeah. I will yeah. get around to it. <laughs> we, sh- we should actually intro you to do murals for Dream Factory in this new space. Amazing. Yeah, that would be a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is a, a proper blank canvas to work yeah. with. Yeah, now that's so much yeah. to do. Um, do you guys, I don't know if you guys are aware as well. So I spoke to this neo lender, this new startup, which is basically helping more and more people get onto the property market. And one of the big demographic impacts of coffee shops, I don't know if you're aware, is like that's one of the main things that makes price, homes in an area go up in price. So not that Redbridge needs it now because it's so <laughs> overvalued, but, <laughs> but that's what, um, so when new coffee shops open, that's actually one of the like main reasons um, the value, the average value of prices of property that's in an area it. goes up. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. I don't think we were like specifically aware of yeah. that. Yeah. I found out quite late. So it's, obviously there's like loads of like reasoning around it as well, but they look at the regeneration of an area um, and the types of shops that are being closed down and what's being opened in their space. So if an area is getting rid of gambling shops uh, and new coffee shops are opening up, that's like a big thing. Schools, makes sense. things like that. To be fair, like I think that does make sense. Like when we go to different areas and if we mm. do see a specialty coffee shop, that is quite representative of what that area might be like and yeah. what that community might be like. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. they say that's like a good bet. If you see like a new coffee shop's opened up in an area, mm-hmm. that's somewhere to buy property. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Should have yeah. bought a house in Redford. <laughs> 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 yeah. like, it's a small parade that we're on, as you know. Uh, yeah. Soon after we opened up and we had this, you know, brand new looking shop, like we noticed kind of some of the neighboring shops just adding a little yeah. uplift to the like, yeah. touches here and there. And, it's you a good thing. That. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's quite, it has an organic like compounding effect. Um, how have you found, I guess, as a, as a married couple as well, like what have you, have you found that that poses its own challenges, but or running a business as a married couple, I suppose it was the first thing that you two did together. Um, do you think on balance that's helped you more or propose more challenges in that you can't switch off, for example, when you get home? I think with me and Chetna, we, we go back so many years that we've built this foundation of knowing how to work with each other. And as we've evolved individually, we've evolved in knowing how to work with each other as well. So be it with uh, Artful Sketcher, for example, almost like I would say for many years, she was like a business manager, if that's a thing, or like a creative mm. manager. And, just kind of like having that person like, how should I do this or what should I do here? Yeah. And so maybe some of those seeds are planted then, yeah. you know, years before. And when it comes to working tangibly together, like in a coffee shop together, I mean, we spend majority of the day together. Like we wake up together, <laughs> yeah. shop together. Go gym together. Maybe, yeah, literally, <laughs> I think majority of the day spent together. Actually, like knowing what each other's strengths and weaknesses are yeah. allows you to just kind of make the day flow better and knowing when to step up in the shop and who yeah. does what. And, yeah. But those things don't need to be spoken about. It just plays out like because you know that person. And yeah, I think it's just understanding. I think we have the foundation there. It's funny because like basically pretty much a year ago now when we first opened, like the first week or two, we had a couple come in and they were married couple and they were like, hmm. oh, you know, yeah, we've got a restaurant. And we were like, okay, cool. And they were telling us about this restaurant. And they were like, yeah, but we're closing down. And we were like, okay. And they were like, we'll 
it really affected our marriage that like we were on the brink what, of divorce you? and we were like okay <laughs> yeah. we were literally a week or two into this huge project yeah. that we just taken on and we were like oh my god and that was like gosh are we gonna survive but do you know what I think obviously every couple's different and I think just since then I mean we're a year on now and I think like Randy said that like we've both sort of play to each other's strengths and weaknesses I mm. think it's important to recognize both and um yeah we definitely have moments like when we're done with the shop we're like silent for a good hour we, we, um, we're on so the way home like, we're just so changed <laughs> but yeah I think it just comes down to understanding and yeah yeah it seems like you have a really healthy balance and it probably helps that you have different strengths yes even from yeah. like what I perceive yeah. of knowing you from the um from over the counter mm. it's like you have your individual strengths which you can lean into and I wonder whether you've consciously leaned into them or you've naturally fallen into those places like I I, I feel like you're really organized and like <laughs> <laughs> All the yeah. Um, I'm glad you have that perception yeah. but but again like it could be again that's just how I perceive it and, and obviously I know about like your creative um, side and like being able to build those out but it I do think you're lucky in that you're able to like complement each other that way because it is challenging even like running so I run a business with one of my best friends and there are times it's really challenging and sometimes we have to sit back and remind ourselves what are we prioritizing friendship or business mm. and I'm like and and then that puts everything into perspective because I'm like okay my friendship is more important than any conflict or any business mm. um so let's de-escalate let's let's manage things more um in in, in an appropriate way but it is challenging because it because because yeah. because you're because you're diving into something and and there's natural challenges that you face. I think definitely like you know like comparing to before when we used to work in you know two different industries, different practices, whatever. You come home and you bring a certain type of energy from work, which may or may not be relatable. Whereas mm. now, like anything that we bring home, and it's inevitable, like you do bring back some mm. if it was a bad experience or whatever it is, mm. or you, you bring it back home and we know what's going on and we both know what we're talking about so sometimes it can be a good thing because it's easier to solve but sometimes it can be like you need a cut off point where yeah. it's like okay let's switch off from the day because we're home and, right? yeah. and we should just be at home but it, it's it's a fine line and you're definitely the one to encourage the cut off point on. <laughs> I could go on did you ever have any like and this is like more of a question a personal question like did you ever have that point where you're uh, the fear of wow, we're about to give up, like, the reliable income, like, we've got our jobs and everything, and, like, just go it alone. And Because I've had a similar question I've asked, like, different... I interviewed, like, YouTubers who made it and, like, people in other professions that have... Now we look back <coughs> and they've made a success of it. Um, but even they were saying there were points where... Um, I interviewed a, a friend and an uh, old ex-YouTuber called Jamie Rawston, and he was like, yeah, there was a point where I was like, I'm going to have to get a bar job, and I, we, I had to make it in the next six weeks. Mm. Um, but then obviously it went really well but there was a genuinely a point where he's like what am I doing mm. did you ever have points of that fear yeah I think yeah. they still exist today in some shape or yeah, form like, do, yeah. you know when you're running your own business you, like, like we said you can never switch off and making that switch for me was a really difficult decision whereas you know Chetna's had prior experience in some ways so it was more of a stepping stone transition whereas for me it was this big leap yeah i think for me before i've potentially had the opportunity to for example take artful sketcher more on a full-time level yeah. and you know but you have these comforts of working you know and stability. It's stability regular income and that allows you to be creative as and when you need mm. but i never took that jump then um and then this time around it was kind of like well we can't let the opportunity go we have to make it work well i definitely think covid also helped you yeah. do that though because definitely. i think he if you were still going into the office i think you'd find it way harder i think mm. where you're working from home just to have that virtual conversation and mm. be like by the way i want to leave mm. i think it made it a bit easier for you mm -hmm. um but yeah like it's definitely a scary thing i think i was less scared before doing it so yeah. i'm more like leap of faith type of thing. like I'll just go for anything but then I think now like having opened it yeah you do have those those weeks or months where you're like uh, yeah. how are we going to survive like yeah. especially now at the moment like when you have a house and bills and you know it's, yeah. it's tough but um yeah, yeah. I, think. 
I think the timing of it all was really interesting as well because in some ways COVID helped make that decision. Yeah. But also it was a really yeah. challenging, really challenging time, time yeah. to actually make that switch. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's almost like a, an oxymoron in a way yeah. like, where it was easier because like life had just completely slowed down. But then equally at the same time, it's like, we don't know how this is going to perform. Yeah. yeah. It's so funny because they say that fear is the reason that like so many dreams like go to die. Mm. Um, which is why I always remind myself, especially when you're fairly young and you've got no dependence, it's the time to like make those risks and yeah, most people says. don't do it. Yeah. Um, Jim, Jim Carrey always used to talk about like his dad had a secure job as an accountant, but he was, his dad was the funniest man he knew. Mm. And this is Jim Carrey. Like, mm. He was like, my dad is the funniest man I knew. He could have like been a superstar, but he was fearful. So he just yeah. sat in his boring job as an accountant because he thought it was secure and it was safe. Um, and then guess what? Ten years later, he got made redundant anyway. So mm-hmm. then he just like dissolved into a life of mediocrity. Um, so there is like reminders of like when there's risks to take, there's uncapped reward potentially. Mm-hmm. But also like why not? Because then you're always going to look back and be like, oh yeah, do you remember? Should have I think that could have. Yeah. 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 And I, I always think that as well because even me now, sometimes I'm there like, how easy would it be just to turn up for work and then switch off and. Then I'm like, that would be so dead though. I can't sit still. Like I always feel like, sometimes I'm like, yo, I get up early. I do my own thing. Then I go to work. I do a full day. And then I'm doing other stuff as well all the time. And then I have to remind myself that that's amazing. Like the intangible benefits of that is, I mean, the people I've met, the conversations I have, like all the non-financial benefits of it as well is like, is, is amazing. Um, so I probably don't know if I could ever just sit still anymore. Sometimes I'm like, yeah, it'd be sick to just. Turn up for work, leave work, switch off. Whenever you want. I'm saying but I can't do toxic it. productivity. Yeah. I've looked into it, yes. <laughs> yeah, maybe. So don't listen to me. <laughs> but I do think rest is also very important. It's very important. Yeah. yeah. And I always I'm open about like routinely burning myself out. But yeah. I also don't think I know any other way. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a work in progress. I think you asked me on the way, like, why do we sleep so late? Like Yeah, like mm. we're like, we're tired, we're tired. And then you're so we're tired just, that you can't sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're yeah. just buzzing. Like we're talking about yeah. the coffee shop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, honestly. What do you think you'd be doing if you weren't doing Art for Blend now? Still be an architect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you would think. be. I think I'd still be in my government job. But I think, I don't know, because I do, I, I do get that seven-year itch that they say in like when you join companies. And I, I don't know, I could have moved on. I don't know. Yeah. It's hard, who knows? What do you think have been your greatest challenges? Looking back now, a year, what do you think have been your greatest challenges with Artful Blend? Getting people to understand spiritual coffee <laughs> <laughs> who don't understand it. Yeah. I think, um, I think the spectrum of coffee, like, it, there's such a wide range, mm. right? And we're at this really sort of niche end, yeah. which is, I would say, fairly new to where we're located. And... The people that get it will really love it and captive know, audience right yeah. and the people that don't get it will kind of question okay the price of this coffee yeah they won't understand the notes that kind of the weighing process you know the extraction of the coffee and all, all these things that we take so much pride in you know looking after um but i think there's a there's a sweetness in seeing the people who do love and appreciate good coffee and seeing you know people walk out of the coffee shop saying oh that tastes good and um you know or saying i didn't feel the need to put sugar in this or yeah. you know pump loads of like syrup into it uh, and then sometimes seeing that trickle down into like five star reviews on google yeah like all these things outweigh the person who kind of you know walks out of the shop or, yeah you know, you see them holding another coffee cup, mm. won't mention any names. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, so I think that's interesting challenge, like as a concept, bringing specialty coffee to that area of Redbridge. Yeah, I think what's been really difficult for me to like understand and get to grips with is the fact that people would tend to choose like to spend £4 in Costa rather than £3 half a blend because they trust the brand mm. and they know the brand and it's just, it's not about the coffee. And that for me is like, like the trust in the world. yeah that that trusting the the independent <laughs> coffee shop that's like you know working hard to make it costa coffee is shy as well yeah you said she's, it it's just bean juice <laughs> yeah it's just, <laughs> it's just bean juice get 
Oh, oh. Full blend. <laughs> no, honestly, I, I, yeah, I just, yeah, I guess people do just lean into like what they understand and they're comfort, yeah, what comfortable they know. with. Yeah, it's been, it, that's been really interesting for me, I think, personally. Mm -hmm. And the finances have been quite That is quite well, like, interesting. Yeah. Just how to run a business. Yeah. You know, like accountants, taxes, yeah. just How employees. do you go from being employed to self-employed? Yeah. Like, you know, what you've does been that used to like? this PAYE pace yeah. all yeah. this time and all of a sudden you flip the script and now you're yeah. the one in charge of all of this. And, yeah. you know, there's no time for learning. You, you don't get taught any of this at school. Yeah. yeah. So it's very much in situ learning, like on the go and you don't have time to prepare for it. It's just like, live and direct and like oh that's good to know if i do this like <laughs> yeah. before i would have done this and yeah um so you're constantly learning and probably making so many mistakes along the way and but neither of us are into that so that's yeah that's it's not quite that important great. so it's something that yeah. we have to really force ourselves <laughs> to be on top of it's yeah. so funny because so we run a, a finance a personal finance community brand we're called millennial money right this first six months of us making money we didn't have an accountant so <laughs> It was so yeah, dumb, like, it's, it was yeah, so it's dumb. Just... Like, I remember um, Shaq was like, we should probably get an accountant. And the first conversation we had, they were like, you guys are so stupid. Like, you'd have saved so much money if you just, like, got in touch with us earlier. Yeah. But, like, we don't have, we've never, How like, we've know? never, like, we've processed invoices. We're getting paid, sick, tax. Oh, yeah. wait, we have to think about that ourselves yeah. now. Like, loads of other things that you never think about. And I remember the first time we had to pay tax. <laughs> I looked at that, like, because obviously obviously everyone has to pay taxes because it's not taken away directly from your pay slip yeah. you feel like you're losing the money yeah, yeah. so yeah. i remember the first time we had to pay tax i was like what do you mean what, <laughs> what do you mean yeah. this is my money yeah. <laughs> what do you mean why are you taking it from me um sometimes but, you hear it like you're in conversation with someone and they'll be like oh yeah so you've done this like this like this or they'll be like yeah yeah and you're just like I don't know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Make no of it. Yeah, yeah. hundred percent. Luckily, like Shaq, that I have like you, you, you can deal with that side of it. Because if I do, I'm just gonna make a mess of it. But mm. yeah, I remember initially you have this attachment to this new way of like making money, and you feel like yes, we're finally making revenue, and you hadn't even considered all of the outlay as well. So mm. Definitely, I can relate to the mm. to the steep learning curve in finances and running a business also for you guys because you're like tangibly employing people um managing all the pnl um and then you've got tangible goods that you're selling there's so much more that comes into it like yeah. staffing you have to think about mm. yeah. um which is a challenge which has been a challenge for two years across so many industries mm. um, i think what's also important is that we've opened up art for blend it's not a case we're not just managing art for blend we work at art for blend mm. as well yeah. so a lot of our days, a lot of the weeks and months, and obviously the year that's gone by, we've been on the ground. And I mean, we love it, we enjoy it, but it then removes that chance to then focus on other areas mm -hmm. uh, or, or, or give that much time to other areas that, you know, really require you to be like on it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we really were conscious to be there, live it, breathe it. You know, there's only so much like data and numbers will tell you. Yeah. But you, you, you're there every day and like you just pick up so many intangible qualities and quirks and uh, things that help you grow the business. Absolutely. Without this whole section being like a winch fest by all of us about like uh, <laughs> the perils of like running your own business, it is, despite all of that, so rewarding and so like immensely valuable. And I think for any like, young person or like the classic millennial dreamer of thinking of like wanting to do something for themselves whether they quit completely or not um i think it's important to also say that it is also amazing like to be able to make something yourself mm. and own that whole process and bring it to the world is like incredibly valuable um and i know we've spoken before about like even though you're working all the time you feel you own your own time Mm. Um, rather than feeling like you wake up and you owe your time to someone else. And that is a hugely empowering feeling, um, I think, when you're running your own business as well. I think th there's such a uh, slight difference between two words you use there, owe and own. Yeah. And owning your time and owing your time have the complete opposite yeah. thing. And there's such a minor difference between it. I mean, I preach about this all the time, about... I live my life by time now and time is mm -hmm. so, you know, precious. Um, I think now when you look at a lot of people in our generation, like 
you know, a lot of people have good jobs, everyone's like, you know, studied well or whatever it is, you found themselves in uh, good earning places. People can afford to go on holidays, people can afford certain luxuries in life, but time is mm. always the thing that people can't own. Um, you can't buy you back can, your time. You can't, yeah. you can go on a holiday for a week, but you have to come back to work. And mm. yeah. for example, on a, on a micro level, we have the ability to leave the coffee shop and just go somewhere, any point in the day, half an hour and then come back or whatever it is, like mm. being able to own that time, half an hour, half a day, you can't put a price on that. Yeah. Uh, and I think for me, like transitioning from working in a nine to five job to this, that is the thing that I cherish the most, being able to own time, yeah. whether it's five minutes, five hours, five days, like that is what I take away yeah, I think that's a really good reminder. I think that we've both had like good experience in our perspective, like, I guess, professions anyway. So I think the good thing to know is that we can always fall back into that. There's no reason mm. why we can't just, you know, sell the coffee shop and apply yeah. for a job again if we wanted to. So I think, you know, that will always be there as well. And you can always go and work for someone. But I think one thing that you don't always have the chance or the will to do mm. <laughs> or the, I guess, just courage to do is to run your own business wherever that might be so yeah. I think like it's been so rewarding I think you said it all really like the value is just yeah you, you can't put yeah. a value to it um it's just been such an incredible experience and to be able to do it together also mm. has been like yeah, yeah you can't really put a price on like impressive. the learnings in running your own business no way in some of these other conversations I had as well like one of my friends he invests in loads of startups and small businesses and he said as well like that's better than any MBA I'm going to do because mm. I'm literally like sitting with these businesses and learning how to run them mm. and you can't buy that like it's mm. that kind of experience is it's, imp it's impossible to learn unless you actually just go ahead and do it yourself mm. um switching into like just more about like your day-to-day now that like a year into Artful Blend, what does both of you like? What does your morning routine? <laughs> what does it What does it look like now? I'm rolling out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's the early riser? Me. Because <laughs> sure, like, I heard that you can just sleep through alarms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> no question. Like yeah, I'll always be the first one up. Um, first one standing at the door, <laughs> <laughs> wondering where you, where she is. Um, uh, we pretty much have like a silent journey to the show. <laughs> she has a power nap, if, if that's what you want to call it. In the car. Set sort of things, like as soon as we enter the shop, the set sort of things like we just kind of fell into and like it's just yeah. the routine now. Yeah. Um, I will kind of do the display and get the coffee machine like uh, up and running, get the group heads like, you know, ready to go. Uh, Basically all the aesthetics. <laughs> And I will do all the background stuff. So I'll like start baking pastries, all of that, just getting the setup for the food and yeah, the shop, the operations, daily operations up and running. Don't, so, don't, don't um, reduce that process of the pastries because yeah. that is, that is, that is dynamite. That is dangerous as well. I come in in the mornings the and fresh smell. Fresh like croissants and I'm just there like, whoa. Yeah, but your willpower is still immense. <laughs> yeah. Your willpower is good until it gets to Friday. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you'll have the brownie. Um, yeah. Yeah, like we do, uh, you know, bake throughout the day. Um, like we'll do a, a selection in the morning and, you know, for example, the, the almond croissant, like it's a baked croissant. We, we cut the croissant open, cream it ourselves and do that whole process ourselves um, before putting it on display. And our concept of baking kind of less but more frequently throughout the day keeps those aromas flowing in yeah. the shop and keeps that fresh looking pastry on display rather than like a tired looking one that's made mm. up early in the morning, in, kind of mid, midway through the afternoon. Um, so yeah, like the coffee shop is such a fluid moving sort of environment there's always things to do so you'll have your busy moments you'll have your quiet moments and it these pockets of spaces in the day just allows you to like replenish things yeah. and top things up and oh we need to order this okay cool cool, cool. and it's yeah. very very fluid throughout the day i think mornings are our favorite though aren't they because, mornings are probably the yeah favorite. they can they allow us to like have space and breathe but also to have customers mm. have my morning coffee <laughs> love it Mm. It must be amazing to like think of an idea like you both do and then 
have the ability to just like put it into the world tangibly and be like, wait, I've thought of this recipe. I'm going to make it and see if it works. Mm. Yeah. Like, like there's no like higher chain to go through to be like, yeah. no, should we just see? Yeah, I'm just going to try. Self, like, you know, present this idea. Yeah. And, like we just think of things and let's try it. And yeah. yeah. What's your favorite thing that you've launched? Would you say? So Would you, I guess you have individual ones. Like if you had to, That's if you had to pick. One. Go on. <laughs> Okay. Wait, do you think it's going to be the same? No. All right. Oh, it's a hard one. It's a hard one. I can say different things for different reasons, but you go. I think mine are the toasties only because I don't think I expected them to be what they are. Like, I don't think I expected them to be as good as they are. Like, that wasn't our star product ever. Mm. Our coffee was, right? And we, like, I knew that. I knew to expect it. Obviously, it's my favorite thing in the shop because it's, it's the coffee. It's insane. But I think the toasties just took me by surprise. Yeah. And when we launched them, and they're, they're, they're just, they're so popular. Mm. Um, they're like in very high demand. I think that's yeah. probably my favorite. Um, because also we sat down and came up with that menu and those flavors and we just went with it, didn't we? And yeah. it was just kind of a stab in the dark and it was just what we liked yeah. and it worked. So yeah. I think that was quite cool. Especially being one of the first things that we kind of bashed heads together and thought, yeah. oh, how are we going to do Because kind of with coffee, like, you know, you source a good roaster and we work with Perky Blenders who mm. we get along really closely They're with incredible. and they've been yeah. amazing support in setting up and just the daily operations and the training that they provide to our baristas as well. And they've just been really great to work with. And we also were really conscious to work with, you know, locally yeah. based roasters and Perky's branding also aligns with ours. So they've been really great to work with. So with the coffee, it was kind of like, once you've done so, your due diligence and selecting a right roaster, you'll be okay. Uh, aside of making the good coffee. Yeah. But with the toasties, I think we really have to sit down and be like, how should we do this? That's something that's not too eccentric that people are like, whoa, I don't want to try that, but enough to entice that interest and be like, yeah. oh. Yeah. So for example, like we have the Heritage Toasty, which has probably been one of the most kind of popular ones, popular ones yeah especially with the demographic but it's like an ode to our heritage right and it's yeah but in a funky cool way that's one with the seven it right yeah mm. yeah dank sometimes yeah. we will just like put ideas down and be like should we just try it and then we'll try it and be like okay it works and i don't know maybe it's just having two different minds but two brains into one yeah yeah um, that's cool though for me i think it was maybe the artful blends like mm. i think when we thought of the name Artful Blend, it wasn't with the mindset to have a specific list of creative drinks. Like mm. we never set out yeah. to have that. And actually that kind of came a few months in, I would say like we opened up September last year and maybe around October, November time, we started thinking, well, maybe we could try this with this and kind of experimenting with a few different flavors. And we, we kind of created this list of drinks. And as with anything, I think the stronger ones stick and some of the weaker ones maybe become seasonal drinks or, or, or you kind of phase them out. But we have a strong body of what we call artful blends now. And that process was very organic. And I think that's kind of my favorite thing now. To yeah. Hone in on that and be like, what can we do next? Yeah, that's really interesting. And obviously with the namesake as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How, it all, how it all fit together. Um, I was lucky enough to sample uh, your new menu um which is very exciting and it's it's what everything you're describing is like seeing it in practice because you guys are like really creatively coming up with recipes and concepts and actually trialing it before bringing it to light but what's next for without me just doing a hard sell what, <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what is next for artful blend <laughs> brunch, brunch yeah. yeah this weekend this weekend so yeah that's something we wanted to do for ages yeah. But I think this is maybe more of a me thing not to rush into it. Yeah. Mm. Chetna is definitely more of a bullish sort of like, let's just do it and we'll work it out. Whereas I'm yeah. a bit more like, no, let's think about it. Yeah. Let's, how are we going to do this? And the timing has to be right. And I don't know, I think we got to a point now where we were approaching the one year anniversary and we thought it would be a great time to level up, uh, yeah. introduce something different. I think our toasties will always be like a staple thing. Yeah. I don't think we'll really expand that selection too much. Um, but brunch is something that customers are also asking about. And 
we just wanted to bring something cool and different. And different, yeah. And it's been really fun experimenting again, having that chance to experiment with flavors. It's quite funny because like, obviously, Randy's more, I mean, you're into the flavors, but more about the aesthetics. And I'm more, I'm a huge foodie. So mm. I'd be like, no, but this works. And he'd be like, but that color doesn't work with this dish. And then it needs to have green or it needs to have bread. And I'm like, no, but that flavor doesn't work. So it's been quite fun and interesting. Like when you tried it yesterday, it was just so cool in the kitchen, but it was, um, yeah, people buy with their eyes, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, for sure. Knowing like technically like what colors work and, and that thought process going into yeah. what your dish is going to look like. But then she'll be like, well, what about if we kind of introduce this flavor into it? Because it, you know, contrasts against this. And I think traveling is a big part of it as well. Yeah. Like, sure. You know, Chet, she's definitely traveled a lot over the years and yeah. even together, various places we've been to. It'll be like we've tried something there that whether it's an ingredient or this kind of looks good with that or this went well with that and yeah. bringing all of those experiences together in a coffee shop world it, it is really cool to do Super that fun. and then also getting people's reactions like yours yesterday yeah was i was so i was useless because i liked everything <laughs> 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 you were sat there like criticize something <laughs> i like it all <laughs> but but even having a session like that was great because we kind of came back today and there was one one thing that we thought required a little bit of tweaking and just having that session yesterday allowed us to come today with Do the it. right sort of like mindset and be like, yeah. and we clocked it today and it was wicked. Can you give us any sneak peeks into how you're dividing the menu? We've got sweet and we've got savory. Um, so we've got, yeah, a range of options for both. Um, we think every dish is pretty unique mm. within itself um, and yeah, like I I've think. got I've got Do two it. fan favorites Go already. On. You know what they are. Truffle one, shuffle. One shuffle shuffle. Yeah, and two is gonna be croissante. Actually, do you know what? Maybe so. Maybe yeah. three. Because you're more savory. Oh, is yeah, it more savory. Yeah. Um, Sahara. Sahara. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. If you want to know what these flavors actually mean, <laughs> hit up Artful Blend. <laughs> 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 Brunch menu coming soon. You hit it here first. <laughs> 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 no, but I think that's amazing. I'm, I'm obviously so happy for you guys to launch that. It is a like um, an obvious next step up for what yeah. you can do, and there obviously is real appetite for it. I think brunch is fast becoming my favourite meal of the day. Same. Mm. Yeah, There's yeah. Same so often much. that I just um, I'm just like, should we brunch to anyone? Any any mm. motive? Like, yeah. Brunch? It's not it's not as informal as a breakfast, but then it's not as um, heavy as. A, a dinner, dinner or anything yeah. i think that's going to be true. our next challenge which is convincing people it's not just a a, a sloppy a yeah English like up. it's yeah. A, something a lot more carefully curated yeah but yeah exciting i hope it'll be well received i think it will i think it will so a few quick fire questions for you just to like test your preference um i'll go one by one i'll start off with you randy mm. morning coffee or evening tea morning coffee how about you, Chandler? Your afternoon coffee. Mid-morning. <laughs> Do you have a cut-off point? In the 12 p.m. onwards, is like, if it's a bad day, <laughs> I'll need a second one. But any time before midday, I'm good for one coffee in the day. Like, one coffee a day, I'm good. Bad day, two coffees. Yeah, my standard is like two, isn't it? Yeah, yeah your standard is two. How about you, morning coffee? I've started to have two in the last couple of weeks. Don't yeah. know what's going on. Um, Morning coffee, first thing. What's your cutoff? So, so I for years um, have always just had one coffee a day before ten or eleven a.m. Um, the last couple of weeks, I've been having a decaf in the afternoon. I don't know what's happened to me. Yeah, I did do yeah, that so for I a while. I don't think there is a cutoff really. Benny, do you have a cutoff point with your coffee? Yes, four. Four p.m. Yeah, I think that's fair. Four. Oh, for, <laughs> for, for, for coffees. Fair play. I'm, I feel better now. <laughs> Sick. Um, we need more customers like you. <laughs> that is sick. I feel, yeah, sick. I feel way better about myself now. Um, sweet or savory? I think sweet. Really? I did yeah, not expect that. I think. I think, yeah, because I stop myself from having sweet things more than I will savoury. So when I do have sweets, it feels more enjoyable. 
Oh, fair play. Right. Right. You, yeah, no, he's definitely sweet. I think it's that. Sweet or savory? Savory. Same. Yeah. But, because the last, because I didn't live with my brother for so many years and I've lived with him for the last two and a bit years, he has a sweet tooth. I've acquired it now. Mm. Mm. But I still say savory, I think. It's, yeah, it's mad. Um, right, early morning starts or late nights in the office? <laughs> well, late nights, for sure, maybe not in the office. But yeah, like I think by nature, I'm definitely a night owl. Mm. I think a lot of creatives are anyway. Um, most of your sort of creativity comes out at night. Um, but I think just with the way life is now with the yeah. coffee shop, like just being up early, it just sets the tone for the day and you can't afford to be up at 3, 4 a.m. Like yeah. I used to be. Um, so yeah, that's me. Yeah, I think I used to be a night owl. I think I'm definitely... <laughs> okay, I'm not an early bird, but I'm a morning person. So I like, think I think we have to give it because you're there every t- every day, thanks. early, Thank even you if you're not fully sure. awake. You you're turning up, which yeah. is getting the reps in. That's the important thing. Yeah, thanks. that's it. The reps in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, brunch or dinner? Brunch. Brunch for sure. Right. See, so you're almost off brand there. It's brunch. Yeah. Brunch. Brunch is a party yeah, brunch. line. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm <joking>. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so one thing that we like to wrap up with and ask all of our guests is um, whether you'd like to share any loose change with our audience. It could be anything that you're watching, anything that you've read, anything interesting. It could be something completely stupid, um, but just something that you'd like to share with the audience. Any loose change that you'd like to drop? Where you got? <laughs> <laughs> I would just say, I think, I think people just need to go for it more sometimes. So I think like, just do it. Just take that leap Thank and you. do it. Like, don't think about it. We were just talking about actually on the way here because there's always that moment where you're like considering, like whether it's like, I don't know, skydiving and you're just about to jump out and you're like, oh, I don't think I can do this. But then you just got to do it anyway. And I think it's just like breaking through that moment and just doing it. Like yeah. I would advise, yeah, just get on with it because you can always change it if you want to change it. Yeah. There's nothing stopping you, so it's okay. Don't I like scared. that. Thanks. I, like <laughs> I think for me, um, it's something I call the three Ps. So the first, the first P being passion. I think anything you do in life, you have to have this core passion in what you're doing. Um, the second P being having patience. Um, passion combined with patience allows you to nurture whatever it is that you're doing and then the third p being perseverance on that journey kind of um you know exploring your passion Mm. there were many times where things might not play out the way you want they are not looking promising or you think is it worth it you'll start questioning yourself but most often you find if you keep kind of churning away and keep going at it you know you'll get reap the rewards that is so profound i write that a lot passion patience perseverance i like that i was going to do one but mine's really silly so i think (laughs) we'll we'll wrap it up with that but thank you so much both of you for joining on this episode of loose change um if anyone's ever in east london make sure you check out artful blend they have me in a headlock so uh, (laughs) yeah amazing coffee and even better energy in the shop as well but yeah thank you for joining us thank you thanks for having us